Ron is the most impressive instructor I've ever flown with. Oh, he did a good job. Qualified Harvard pilot. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> and I was happy to introduce him to the Diamond Aircraft crew. That's a beautiful machine, man. How was that? This was amazing. <laughs> this is really flying an airplane, I tell you. Wow. And now it's my turn. Ron has over 75 years sharing aviation, and this is a snapshot of his story. Probably after he talked with a 90 year old grandfather. No. <laughs> the, oh, but you are so sharp on everything, that's crazy. <laughs> I see him, he's opposite our wingtip there now. Oh, yep, I got him. How many students do you think you've trained in your career? <laughs> That's a good question, Steve. Flying with this crew was amazing. Crossing the Atlantic and logging 25 hours left seat in the DA-62 An epic adventure with fast friends in Martin and Mickey. Till now my bladder has been okay. But now we do have the four hours flight. Don't don't jinx it now. Four hours 15. During the prep flight with Mickey, he mentioned something that caught my ear. But I want to get into like old old flying thing. You know, the dream would be like flying bulls in Salzburg. Okay. They're only flying warbirds and everything. How long are you guys in Canada for? Are you just turning and burning? Uh, no, we will be there uh, until uh, Sunday. I think we might need to go to Windsor on Saturday. That would be absolutely crazy. So once we finished the trip... Welcome to Canada! Yeah, thanks man. That was awesome. And congratulations to the crossing. We headed straight to the museum, and I introduced the guys to good friend of the channel, Ron. He's flown Mach 2 in the F-104, so of course there was one on his 90th birthday cake. And his book shares some amazing flying stories. I'm honored to have had his sign off to solo several types, including the T6 Harvard. Okay, all clear. I'm gonna start priming. All set back here. This is one of the learning nuggets from that experience. Okay, I have two pins, I have fingers, and I have lights. The gear is down. Mixture is rich. Top will go full fine when I turn base. I am secure. Are you secure? All set. All right. My gums check flow had been broken by ATC and I missed going full fine with the prop before my first landing after an otherwise great flight doing all the required air work. It's interesting to watch Ron here, he is keenly aware that I've missed it, but he's not going to say anything until it's absolutely necessary. This is a critical error because without the prop being in fine pitch, the airplane is not configured for a safe go around or a takeoff as we'll be doing after the stop and go which we've got planned here. All right, and we are cleared for the stop and go. Are you good to go? All set. Here we go. Watch your prop there. Uh, Power set. Prop, thank you. Oh, I missed the prop on the downwind jab. You can see me shaking my head after that mistake. There's a full series that covers all of this training if you missed it. Oh, that was good. Uh, you're flying it well. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's just going to be a matter of doing it more often, right? Just to get more used to it. Ron was 86 when he did that flight with me. Currently, he's 90 and still going strong as an active flight instructor. Case in point, star pupil, Don. He's amazing. We just went through our review of all this stuff, and he just rattles it off one, one thing after another. You know, he lets me screw up. I did another radio call screw up today, and boy, did he ever laugh. Uh, tax clearance and a couple of circuits. Clearance. Did you ask for that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I found it interesting if I do a good landing, he always compliments that. But if I do a crappy landing, he's silent. <laughs> it doesn't say anything. The teaching style is fantastic. Don and his buddies Frank and Rick bought an airplane, and Ron is training all three. I'm just going to do two or three circuits exactly. Yep, yep. How many students do you think you've trained in your career? <laughs> That's a good question, Steve. Uh, well, I, I would throw out a thousand. <laughs> wow. 
sending him solo? He's going off solo for uh, maybe 20 minutes or so. Okay, cool. He's the furthest along of the three? Yeah. He'll probably do his flight test another week or two. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all three of us had previous training, myself the least, and this opportunity presented itself and we decided to get a plane and, and then Ron stepped up and offered to train all three of us. His experience, his patience, his everything, is just a sense of humor, everything has just been top notch, right? With the timing lining up, it was my great privilege to be able to send the Austrian crew for a steerman flight with Ron. It's cool, right? It's just so amazing, I tell you. Man. And you're flying with Ron is like... Is that the primer? Yeah. yeah. So if you forget to do that and you get in and you strap in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Clear. Before we get back to Ron flying with the guys at 90, This is how he celebrated his 85th birthday. Solo, flying aerobatics in the Harvard. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling. Oh, it's my way. What impressed me most about this flight was that he started with a spin, which is no joke in the 5,000 plus pound T6. Okay, we're gonna get ready to do a spin now, so we'll do a quick look around. And we're gonna do a spin to the left, and we'll try and do two turns. And doing the spin to the Harvard, you cut the engine right out, so we'll be going mixture into full lean. I made a full raw version of this flight to share with Ron's family, and it's also posted for Patreon supporters. So now let's get back to the flight with Martin in the Steerman. I'm back on intercom. The brakes are just a little bit grabby, so I'm just going to ride them a little bit, and they'll, they'll be good by the time I give it over to you. See, we have to go back and forth so we can see. <laughs> You're not bad, you're so tall, but most people can't see over the top. I'll, uh, I'll line up on the runway and then I'll give you control and let you take off, okay? Okay, roger my controls and uh, we're clear for takeoff with the right turn out, not above 2,500 as I got it. And you don't really need brakes, just, uh, just lots of rudder on takeoff. Okay, well done. To keep things moving, I'll intercut between the similar phases from Martin and Mickey's flights. And now it's my turn. This is probably my favorite thing to do as flight chops is help facilitate other people having awesome flying experiences. It's so rewarding. You look in there, yep. you can see my face. Yep. When I look in there, I see yours. Okay. If you're happy, you give me a thumbs up. Not happy, you give me a thumbs down. Okay. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, that's perfect. Good. Okay, I'll taxi it out here. Are you painting that uh, thunderstorm at all, Bill? They're moving to the northeast. Some of that stuff that's south of Metro right now might clip us. Okay, I'll stay, I'll stay on tower. You kind of keep me advised. I will. 
Okay, I'll give you control to taxi just up ahead. Just go straight ahead. We're backtracking. You have control. My control? On takeoff, you can use full throttle. Just take it up fairly slowly to full throttle. As you reach close to full throttle, then you can ease the stick forward to raise the tail. And I'll talk you through it there. Okay, we're lined up. We're cleared for takeoff. You have control. Okay, clear for takeoff and my controls. With the approaching storms, McKay's flight ended up being a little bit shorter than Martin's, uh, but Martin did get to do a fair bit of air work, so let's check that out. Can we see that in altitude? Yeah! You're doing a good job! And when you level, you'll notice the RPM go up pretty quick, so it's, uh, just level it down until your speed comes up to about 85, and then bring your RPM back to about 1850. Oh, this machine is beautiful. Okay, just fill your boots, do whatever you want to do. Do some steep turns or whatever. If you do a steep turn, you probably have to bring the power up. Uh, winter El Papa Golf, uh, we're just still inside the zone. Uh, I don't like these clouds, so I will be doing a couple of 360 degrees in here before coming back, Bill. El Papa Golf uh, Tower, Roger. Uh, report returning. Roger. Oh, is good? Yeah, that's good. And you can try a couple of turns, a couple of steep turns. Okay, let's start with the left one. As I say, you'll probably need that a fair bit of power coming around. Okay, good job. Let's do one to the right. Okay, that's good. Was that our prop rush? Yeah. Before we cover Ron showing these guys stalls and landings, here's some great stuff with him working with the three amigos in their Cherokee 140. Well, I got my license uh, in 1947 when I was 17 years old, and uh, I was in the military at, uh, at age 19, and uh, then went right through. That was my hobby at that time, was doing flight instructing at the flying club while I was doing my other military work. So this continued throughout my 32 years in the military. Almost every base that I was on, I would, as a hobby, uh, do a fair bit of flying instructing on the civilian side from there. After retiring as the chief flying instructor or manager at the flying club, I got involved in our Canadian historical here, but I continued to, to do flying instruction both with the Flying Club and, and some other at that time. So, as you can see, it's it's been my life. <laughs> Could have taken the flaps off a little earlier, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and your fuel pump. Fuel pump off, right. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a review, getting you ready for your private pilot license ride. You have control? I have control. Okay, that was good. I would suggest that you do uh, your actions a little quicker. You can't be too rough on that because if you do find yourself in one, you want to get out of it very quickly. It's power off, level those wings, and ease out of your dive. Okay, I'm going to give you some simulated power failure. What's the first thing you do? Do you remember the procedure that you kind of favor? it will be too high for this one. Yeah. Set the glide. Set the glide. Set the glide. That's the number one important thing. Make sure the airspeed is right on. Very important to get the carburetor heat on right at the same time. 
and because it could be carburetor ice or if you do have a, a complete power loss chances are it's going to be fuel related so you'd want to switch fuel tanks get your uh, fuel boost pump on and that sort of thing yeah the problem here i think is that uh, we weren't at our 2000 yeah. over our field okay let's just climb up to about 3000 and i'll let you do a couple of stalls okay i put power to get up to 3000 yep full power Okay, uh, we'll just have a, a quick look around and uh, then you can give me a power off stall. Okay. It's pretty docile in the stall. Oh, yeah, that's an easy one. Oh, yeah. Okay, just uh, do whatever you like here. That's a beautiful machine, man. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Now, well, let's go back to the airport and you can do a couple landings. Yep, that's good. Uh, Windsor Tower, Alpha Papa Golf, uh, we're still in your zone and uh, would like to return for a couple of circuits. Alpha Papa Golf Tower, Roger, runway 12 is active, wind 160 at 8, altimeter 3010. Just make a right hand orbit there for me and report rolling out. Roger, right hand orbit. We can do a right hand 360. Hopefully we're cleared for a stop and go landing on runway 12. 75 is good. 70 to 75 is good. You can either try a wheel landing or a uh, three-point, whichever you want. Well done, sir. Mika had some more challenging conditions for landings as the gust front from the approaching storms was already here. So 80, 75? Uh, yeah, 75 is good. And get, let her keep coming down there. Holy smokes, that's not easy. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, that was good. We rounded out just a little bit high there first, but that's okay. As you can see, it's a bit squirrely once when, when you get out there. How's that? That's not easy. But someone took over that in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Keep a little crosswind on. Yeah. There you go. You got a good challenging first tailwheel landing. Holy smokes. Wing. We got a good wing drop on it too. I saw it. I saw. It. I think I got the shot. <laughs> anyway, huh? well, thanks, so Ron. Sensitive. Oh man, thank you so much. <laughs> you did good, really. That's his first time tail breaker. Yeah, it's his first tail wheel. You gotta get out of the back off. I don't want to. Well, I was hoping to end this trip by taking the guys for a rip in the 14, but those storms are too close. But at least they did get their steerman rides, so mission accomplished. So I'm the last one here tonight cleaning up and I just spent way too long looking into the eyes of these life-size cardboard cutouts of Ron and his wife. Surreal, man. These people have lived such amazing lives and it's been an honor to fly with him. Got checked out in the Harvard back there behind him, which he still flies. Cheers, Ron. Right, Few people cool. can say that uh, they've always done what they wanted to do in their life and, and I can glad to say that I can do that. Oh, it's gonna be nice. Lovely. Okay, that was good. Okay.